Hello, welcome to Web of Stories. My name is Melinda. It's Wednesday, which is Wednesdays with Will. This is part of my ongoing project to work my way through all of William Shakespeare's plays, doing about 10 a year. I take two months off. Uh, and for January, the play we did was The Winter's Tale. Um, now I did my thoughts on The Winter's Tale in two, <laughs> two Wednesdays with Will's ago. Last week I talked about the adaptation I saw. And today I'm gonna to talk about a retelling that I read. And this is The Gap of Time by Jeanette Winterson. I actually found two retellings. There was this one and there was another one called Exit Pursued by a Bear, which is a YA, um, YA novel. And I don't have the author's name. It'll be down in the notes, in the description box below. Um, I have heard that one's very good, by the way. <laughs> but let me talk about um, The Gap of Time and kind of how I'm thinking about The Winter's Tale now. So The Gap of Time is part of the Hogarth Shakespeare Project series, which is, I don't know if this is still going on, if they're still trying to do this, but it was having established authors do retellings of Shakespeare's plays. Um, I can tell you there's Ann Tyler, I believe, did Vinegar Girl, which was Kiss, uh, Kiss Me Kate. <laughs> Sorry, Taming of the Shrew. Kiss Me Kate, also retelling. Um, the Hag Seed by Margaret Atwood is The Tempest, and there are some other ones. I may read those when I get to those plays, we'll see. But this one was The Gap of Time by Jeanette Winterson. I checked this out of the, the library, a digital copy, so I don't have something to hold up. But I also don't have something to refer to as I read this. So if I kind of like, wait a minute, was that right? It's because I can't refer to it. <laughs> Um, this is actually a pretty close retelling. It is set in this modern-ish day. Um, so uh, Leon, who is Leontes, is sort of a businessman in in England. And uh, Zeno, who is Poly Polyxenes, is his friend from school. And Mimi, who is Hermione. She is actually named Hermione in the story, but they call her Mimi. There's only three... There's Hermione, there's Perdita, who's called Perdita, and then Autoclos, who's sort of the the, the comic relief guy. Um, they're the only ones who have their names, the same names. Um, and I won't go through the whole plot because it's pretty much the same plot as the winter. I mean, it is. It's the same plot as the winter sale. It's a very close retelling. Um, but in this case, we, we open with Shep and Clo. So that's the shepherd and his son, the clown, Shep and Clo, who are two African-Americans who happen to see, they see a car accident and someone has, has, has died and they realize something horrible went wrong. Um, but they also know that this person had just put a baby in a baby hatch. And this is in a place in Louisiana called New Bohemia. Um, so they go and they get this baby and Shep, this, this, this baby is like a godsend to Shep. This, Shep's wife had passed. He was dealing with a lot of grief and this baby, Perdita, and they know it's, her name is Perdita because there's lots of things with her. There's jewelry and money and there's also some music and it's called Perdita. Um, they know that's her name. Uh, he feels that she sent it to kind of heal him. So even though she is white and Shep and Chloe are African-American, they do raise her as her own. They adopt her. <laughs> I mean, there's 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 a mention of getting someone to write documents up for her. So there's that issue that she's not, you know, you know. And then we go back in time to see what happened. And that's where we get to sort of the meat of the story. The whole thing, Zeno, who is Leon's longtime friend, is going to leave. He's got a son somewhere named Zell, Florizel. And uh, Leon says, tells his wife Mimi to hey try to convince him to stay and she does it in sort of a very platonically flirty way and as in in the play Leon goes crazy and I don't like to use that word but there's no really no I mean it is so unhinged um that he you know thinks that Zeno is having an affair and it, it's the same story so there is a Pauline Paulina in the play is the best character and I like Pauline in this story because she's actually in the play she was Hermione's lady in waiting I believe um in the, this book she's Leon's like partner not personal assistant but she's like business partner with him and they all like each other <laughs> but and Pauline lets him know exactly what's going on um I I I don't know how I think about this book because um, this is a hard story to retell because it's such a bonkers story. And I really applaud Jeanette Winterson for taking it on. The language was beautiful. I think she did as good as anybody could do with this. 
Um, here's my issue, not with this book, but with what this book brought up about the play. When you read the play and Leon kind of goes all crazy and I, I hate to say go crazy, but there's no, I mean, he, he's unhinged and starts accusing his wife of, and her, his best friend of having affairs and all this. It's just, you know, you're reading the play and you're like, well, that's weird. Well, what is up with him? He's a little bit, he's a little bit out there, isn't he? He's kind of like, you know, you have all these sort of like, you can, you're very much looking at it from the outside. It's, it's just an observant thing. Oh, this, this man's, well, I don't know why he's acting like this, whatever. But when you put it into the modern day and you have a writer who's willing to go there, you realize what is happening is really awful. And there is an incident here where Leon rhymes with tape, Mimi, when he thinks that she's having an affair. Um, it's, it's awful. And you see how really terrible and <sighs> dangerous Leon is. And because that's brought to the future, brought to the surface and you really get to understand it in this modern telling it makes the idea of everyone forgiving each other and kumbaya everything's great at the end a really hard sell and not one that I feel Winterson really succeeds with I don't know if she could I don't think actually Shakespeare even succeeds with it so let's be fair here <laughs> it's very very hard I was I really now one thing that Winterson does do interestingly, is she does try to kind of explain why Leon sort of kind of loses it. And the way she does this is it's a very confusing. Leon is very much in love with his wife. He is also very much in love with his friend. Uh, Zeno and Leon had been lovers in school. So there's also that. So there's like this weird thing, you know, triangle thing there. It's not as in the play, it's like, ha, ah, she's flirting with him, therefore they're having an affair. There's emotional stuff that's there, not that that at all justifies Leon's behavior, but that is to kind of show that this is a, this is a um, powder keg that we're in. And uh, yes, I don't know if it truly explains Leon's behavior, but it, it does a better job than Shakespeare does. I didn't really like the parts that were in London just because I really hated Leon and it was so hard and just, it, it hurt to read it because it was so visceral. And I realized that what I just thought was kind of strange in the play was really something very dangerous. And I wonder if that's something, it, it you know, would Shakespeare's audiences have seen The Winter's Tale the way I am seeing The Gap of Time? I don't know. But then when we go to America and we see it's actually 18 years as opposed to 16 years in this book, 18 years later, we see Perdita and she's grown up. She, with this very loving father and brother, I loved those parts. Um, I thought they were just kind of fun. I wanted to go sit in their, be in their like piano bar that they have. Um, it's called the Fleece, which I thought was really cute. Now, as I mentioned, Autoclus is in it, who is the, the guy who like, he's kind of the con man in the play and I, I didn't really look, care for that character in the play I just thought he was filler really he's actually very interesting in this one he's a, a used car salesman which is perfect <laughs> perfect and he's he's a lot more entertaining in this one and I don't feel that he was as much filler Zeno is a very strange character and he's like a, a video game developer and the whole video game thing is very fantastical, otherworldly, and I don't know if I really bought it. It it, it just, it, it kind of fit, I guess, with the feeling of the story. It just seemed very strange to me. Um, but what are you, again, what are you going to do? <laughs> the story is so weird. So yeah, and then the way they kind of brought it back and the idea of Mimi or Hermione being the statue, that actually they did, a, she, she had a really good way of doing that, which would be a spoiler for me to tell you what it was. But still, I was so bothered by the end and this idea of forgiveness um, for something that is so, I don't think should be forgiven. At least not, now one thing I will say, Perdita, when she goes back and she meets Leon and it's all unveiled that Leon is her father. And she's very clear that Leon is biologically her father, but her father is Shep. He's dad, you know, and I did appreciate that because I think that having her all of a sudden like, oh, I met my father and it all be good would just not work um, considering the circumstances. So I did appreciate that. Now, as for what grade I would give this, and it's hard because this, my problems with this book were actually problems with 
the source material. So one thing I did do is I had originally given the play a B. I lowered that to a C um, the more I thought about it. And also after seeing the adaptation, just it didn't, it started to really not sit well with me. So I did lower my grade of The Winter's Tale to a C. I gave this book a B in just sort of like, it's better. You know, I did actually appreciate it appreciate it. And I do think that it brought things into the play. I don't want to say it's better than the play, but I, she did a really good job of retelling a very difficult story. So I wanted to recognize that with a higher grade, but I, I just, I don't know how I can kind of grade it because as I said, my issues with this book are actually issues with the source material. So, but I will say I really enjoyed, um, Winterson's writing and her style. And I think she did as good as anybody could do with this which is very good because I, I have a short story collection of her that I need to read. <laughs> so I'm glad. I'm glad that I didn't just hate her writing because then I'd be stuck with a short story collection. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I would say, you know, this is probably a worthwhile retelling if you want to read a retelling. However, I've also heard Exit Pursued by a Bear is very good. Um, and I, I may read that still. We'll see. It won't, it won't be this month because it's, I'm filming this on January 30th. So I'm not going to do it in January, but at some point I may read Exit Pursuit by a Bear. Um, but yeah, so that is it for The Winter's Tale. We have done our first play in the Bard's Room. Next week, I'm going to do sort of like a non-spoilery because I did put the spoiler warning on this, even though, I mean, I think it's sort of spoilery, but I'm not going to put spoiler warning on the next one because I will not have read the play by the time I film the next video, so I can't spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just sort of background of the Merry Wives of Windsor. It's going to be a very short video and uh, then we'll be ready to go. Thank you very much. If you are interested in joining in with a discussion with the Bard Room, there is a Bard Room thread on my Discord and the information to join that is down below. And thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, all that jazz. Um, and let me know if you... Uh, if you've read the book, you know, if you would be open to reading a retelling of something that you didn't like or something that you think couldn't be retold, would you be willing to read a retelling of it? Because that was my sort of apprehension with this is I don't think this can be retold. And I was wrong-ish, maybe. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.